Uh, hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our uh, second in the series of lectures uh, at the Fine Art uh, Department of UMPRUM. Uh, they are a part of the Visiting uh, Artist Studio course uh, uh, titled Dialogues by me. Um, it is uh, my mm, absolute honor to introduce uh, you our today guest, um, lecturer Shuli Chang, who is an artist and a filmmaker. A little bit about her. Uh, she builds uh, social interfaces with uh, transgressive plots and open networks uh, for public participation. Among other, her Brandon project from the late 90s was the first web art commissioned project by New York's uh, Solomon R. Guggenheim uh, Museum. As a net art pioneer, she has been also making uh, feature length films based on which terms such as Eco cyber noia, sci fi cyberpunk, and sci fi cypherpunk uh, um, uh, defined their own genres uh, of queer sci fi cinema. She also presented Taiwan at Venice Biennale in 2019 uh, with the project uh, titled uh, Three by Three by Six. Uh, since 2009, she has been at work on an ongoing Yuki project, uh, both of which is uh, also going to present. So uh, today I invited uh, Shuli to present us some of her projects as uh, examples of a brilliant practice that facilitates networks, discussions and developments of concepts between different disciplines, all aiming to re-envision uh, genres, genders, and operating structures in society. So, truly, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maya. Very good to be here. Uh, good to uh, see some friends and students here. Uh, I, uh, the title of the talk today, I title is Site Specific. You and I don't live the same viral reality. Uh, I guess uh, when I talk, to my, uh, talk with Maya about uh, which work should I focus on talking today, and uh, at first I would like to more concentrate in maybe just talk about one work, uh, but at the end uh, Maya say, oh, but you should talk about this work, that work, and that work, and I actually totally lost myself because uh, uh, consider myself in a series of working, uh, different projects, actually sometimes I find it very difficult uh, to bring them uh, together uh, because the, the certain subject matter, this project and that project could be so different. And it's really hard for me, me to turn around uh, to go from one word to the other. Um, but uh, then I, I thought about um, the kind of viral reality we live in uh, and uh, how it's been a year and we are getting used to just sort of kind of conducting our business as, uh, as the way that the web uh, medium is requiring us now. And so we actually, you know, regularly mark our agenda uh, what time is the web meeting? You know, there is really actually not so much uh, uh, actual meeting at all in my case. So I just have my whole kind of web meeting agenda, uh, who to meet, when to meet. At the same time, there's so many uh, different webinar to catch up with. Um, it's always uh, amazing um, to see within this one year how we all still trying to be so productive. We all still trying to think about uh, art in the COVID time, art uh, as we welcome the new normal or back to the normal or uh, the uh, how do we advance to another normality. Uh, so uh, I think I'm in the kind of almost like a very strange mood at this particular junction that it seems like we can get out of it, you know, it despite the third way, um, despite uh, what the news coming from India, it is too threatening. Uh, I think um, 
you, you're looking at the India situation, you're looking at these uh, uh, gas tank, uh, the old gas tank being uh, passed around, you see the A's is not arriving, uh, you see the government is corrupted. And uh, I must say that I cannot uh, not uh, think about the current situation, the viral reality. And to finally, after a year, to say, no, yes, we do have a pandemic. We do have a viral condition. However, what you are experiencing and what I'm experiencing may be totally different. And particularly at this particular junction, we welcome a new player, the vaccine. Uh, if you uh, study the whole history, uh, not the history, but just reading the, the, the vaccine is available these days, what's available, who's producing it, what's the technology that's producing it, uh, how it's been distributed, and uh, uh, you know, who, who gets the vaccine, who didn't get the vaccine, who gets, uh, uh, which country buys it, which country is not uh, releasing their own quota, uh, it, it's a very uh, interesting, uh, also unbalanced uh, situation right now for me. Uh, I think this is a, a, another uh, sort of major play uh, in terms of the uh, political scene and uh, uh, our body, body politics and many things at work. Uh, I'm working on the script, uh, totally on the virus situation. So. Uh, I cannot say that I'm not being affected uh, daily by the viral reality, but then uh, to realize that, you know, which viral re reality that I can be uh, affirmed with. Um, this is becoming uh, quite an issue for me that I ask myself, um, particularly in uh, a uh, very uh, uneasy situation currently happening in India. Um, being saying all these, uh, to come back to the, uh, to talk about my work, but before I even talk about my work, I just suddenly re rethinking about uh, the word site specific. I think it's, it's almost like a very old word, old terms for our practice. And then we used to we used to pile ourselves say oh we are creating work a site specific work for example uh, meaning that say we actually uh, is commissioned with a site particularly or we designate a site that we create a work uh, particularly with that site in mind. Um, I think. Uh, particularly after being so much uh, uh, web presence only these days, I want to just remember like a few buildings, a few sites that I feel um, affect me in the projects I'm going to talk about. And particularly, I think these are the, the way that we should remember what, you know, what goes on uh, what building and where, how let it last forever, maybe, you know. So um, just to come to this. Um, the first site I want to remember is the Vask the Vark in Amsterdam, which was uh, built in 1488 and uh, is set up at, uh, it's right at the Amsterdam Central, uh, near Amsterdam Central at the New Markt. Um, and um, around uh, 1997, I think it was the first time I went to Amsterdam, I was looking for a uh, theater anatomicon. And uh, I find it in the vast uh, building. Uh, and it is exactly uh, this theater anatomicon I was looking for uh, to look lunch or to start uh, my uh, internet project for the Guggenheim Museum called Brendan. Uh, I remember looking at uh, 
the building itself and inside the building, the uh, uh, the theater and the temple structure are still there. Of course, you don't have, uh, I think the, uh, you don't really have all these uh, wood structure uh, of the uh, audience anymore, but uh, either the, the ceiling um, remain there. Uh, Vag, of course, still today uh, became um, the media space in Amsterdam. I became in around uh, 1998, 1999, I actually became the first artist in residency at Vag uh, at the time. Um, then I want to talk about another building, which is the building of Pazazzo del Prigioni in Venice. This was built in 1589 as a prison, uh, a you know, Ajang prison to the Delca prison next to it. Um, I'm bringing this particular building because it was the site that I was uh, commissioned to do the Venice Biennial representing Taiwan in 2019. Now, if we look at a building as such with a, a, a whole history uh, that actually the building actually the, the when I first did the research, I realized the building was a uh, housing or imprisoned uh, Casanova, Giovanni Casanova uh, around uh, 18th century. And so it was actually uh, also uh, found here. I developed a whole uh, project three by three by six for Venice Biennial 2019. Uh, it is amazing to actually think about the possibility of working with a, a building, a structure, and to remember the past history and to be able to um, kind of configure a, a story or you know, a project with it. Uh, then I would say, other than these physical uh, architecture building, I also want to bring back uh, our body as the final frontier. Uh, I keep coming back and coming back uh, to work on projects uh, with body. Uh, I think uh, the body, you know, uh, as the final frontier, as the way how eventually we can lose it or still keeping it um, and uh, well, this is actually really the, the subject of my current film at the moment. Um, just a couple of images found it, for, for example. Um, so, yes, yeah, so today I really uh, hopefully can be talk about, can talk about these uh, three projects a bit. Uh, but uh, before this, um, I want to bring up a few terms that. Uh, a few terms of practice or application that I'm myself thinking about uh, nowadays quite a bit as a way to uh, bounce up some, hopefully some conversation that we can still happen in uh, later. Uh, uh, I think uh, in this category, medium, media, application, platform, engine, interface, intervention, navigate, immerse. Uh, I think about each of my work in terms of which medium I choose to use, which application I choose to use, which platform I'm going to build, and which engine that I'm going to build with, or finally, I work with interface as intervention, and I consider uh, navigation is a, a, a uh, for me, navigation is very tricky. You know, I, I never make it easy for uh, navigation in my work. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, teasing or challenging the audience in, in this sense. And at the same time, um, currently a lot of my work is being called immersed, uh, immersed work, immersed media, uh, mixed media installation. Uh, so I guess as an artist, I really want to pose you this question also, 
as to uh, how we, uh, how do we kind of categorize our work? Yeah. Uh, actually, today I just got a review from a uh, media, media part in France, and the reviewers say my work is not able to categorize. So I don't know. I think maybe that's supposed to be a good term. Um, so anyway, OK, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to see how much I can carry through all these three works just to show that I do work. Uh, uh, the first piece I want to just br briefly bring it back because I think uh, as I am talking about body again, I think it's important to bring Brendan back in discussion. Uh, Brendan was a one year narrative project in installments happening mostly on the web uh, during the whole year time. So during this whole year time, I was able to upload different uh, interface, uh, different content uh, uh, onto the web. And at that time, I thought this was the easiest way to avoid censorship, actually. Uh, I had a lot of censorship trouble uh, in the 90s. So I thought that the, if I designed a web project that took me a year to finish and and because uh, there is no way to preview the work before it's shown, even at the Guggenheim Museum, uh, that would be a best way to avoid censorship. Anyway, so the project turns out to be uh, what I call a one-year project uh, in installments that explores issues of gender fusion and technical body in both public space and cyberspace. Uh, this was of course the end of the 90s and the 90s was the, the beginning of the venture into uh, the cyber narrative in a way uh, the avatar the chat uh, there's many different uh, application in the chat spaces as we are all familiar now uh, I think uh, Brendan takes up the the story of Tina Brandon or Brandon Tina uh, from Nebraska, who was uh, actually a, a gender, uh, I would call a transgender person uh, who was finally find out about his uh, true uh, gender identity, uh, uh, anatomical gender identity as a woman, so he was raped and murdered along with two other friends. Uh, and this happened on the New Year's Eve, uh, 1993. Uh, at the same time, there was another story that caught my eye during that time was a, a rape in the cyberspace. Uh, this rape in the cyberspace written by Julian Dippo at the time was also about a, a kind of moo, M-O-D, M-O-D, the space that uh, how in the moon space that uh, a ray can happen, uh, even a group ray, or you know, with uh, totally using chat, you know, totally just using typing words. Um, it's very interesting uh, for this project at the time. Of course, it was trying to upload a real person from Nebraska to the internet at the same time on the internet trying to deal with many different possible uh, scenario and uh, it really took a year. For this particular project, I built quite a few different interface. I'm just gonna go through some of these images quickly. Uh, this was the uh, a bigger projection of the, all the interface, uh, a selected interface uh, showing at the Guggenheim Museum in Soho at the time. This the uh, one big, uh, interface called Big Dow, which uh, allows you to kind of swap uh, through a different gender identity here. Uh, the major interface is a road trip, uh, which uh, along the road, I was able to explore uh, different, um, different episodes of uh, different uh, stories, um, you know, a lot of these are new stories and uh, very transgender. There's also these uh, panopticon interface. Um, 
I, I didn't get into talk about panopticum, but uh, uh, at that time when I went to Amsterdam, I also discovered uh, Netherlands still has one of the few panopticums still exist. So I went to visit the real panopticum uh, in um, in Netherlands and uh, was uh, kind of building the whole interface based on the uh, Panopticon, the all surveillance concept. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, what I did with the theater anatomical interface is to actually build up a, a interface that connects uh, Amsterdam and New York uh, and uh, start holding actually real event, uh, performance event that involve public, public, uh, net public uh, participation not only public in real sight, but also net public uh, participation. Um, so this is actually a rebuild of the theater anatomical with, uh, I don't know if you can see it clear, but there's actually a, a, a webcam on one of the ring there. Uh, however, this was the 1998, Oh, 1990, this was 1998 and uh, we actually is um, impossible to do any streaming. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we was actually sending uh, one, uh, one picture at a time to New York. <laughs> so anyway, so um, as I say, I feel like I should just go back to this project very quickly. Uh, to sort of show you the, uh, uh, my idea about talking about uh, the cyber body between the real and actual space. Um, then uh, jump to, uh, so jump from 1998, 1999 to 2019, I uh, accidentally uh, got a commission from Taiwan uh, uh, to present uh, Taiwan as uh, the artist at uh, Venice Biennale. Um, and uh, I wasn't sure, a uh, result to work was called three by three by six. Uh, it's actually is a, a, a quite heavy work. Uh, it constructs collected counter account of sexuality where transpong fiction queer and anti-colonial imaginations hack the operating system of the history of sexual subjection. Um, well, this work is um, a lot to swallow. Uh, maybe I, I just draw the, the installation view uh, to get it get us started. But uh, again, it, is, uh, it, it would be very difficult for me to totally talk about this work without getting into the whole uh, theory of uh, the concept or different reference behind it. Uh, uh, as earlier, when I show you the building of the uh, Prigioni, um, when I was given the space and I thought about uh, prison, I thought about panopticon actually, um, but at the same time, I think in Brandon, when I was dealing with panopticon, I think about society or control, I think about the uh, the way of the whole surveillance cells, like both the medical hospital cells and the prison cell. However, by the time of 2019 uh, or 18, when I was research on uh, this project three by three by six, uh, the scene with the surveillance uh, has totally changed. Uh, so I, I would say that we jump into a digital panopticon. So we don't really have this particular physical, although, although the, the installation is set in a, a physical uh, historical prison, uh, at the same time, uh, if we think about the current society we live in uh, with all the facial recognition camera, the tracking, the data tracking system, uh, we actually do live in a digital panopticon that is beyond our uh, uh, control at the same time, I think a lot of my work is always asking the question, is resistance at all possible? Uh, 
anyway, uh, the project, uh, uh, the project three by three by six originated from when I was doing the research on the prison prigioni to find out that um, uh, Casanova was used to prison here. However, if you look at, I, I did some research and uh, I actually couldn't find the real reason. There was real, no particular crime that he was charged. He was just being put into the prison. Uh, he's uh, able to still have some food delivered to his prison cell. Uh, through different bribing techniques, so he doesn't have to suffer from eating badly. Uh, at the same time, he uh, managed to uh, escape within the year time. Uh, now, it was very interesting to go from this particular Casanova incident or historical real story uh, to actually uh, start consider possibility to uh, bring in together 10 different cases as a way to jump into the uh, exploration about why, uh, uh, how, why, how uh, the people are in prison due to, uh, uh, due to sexual gender dissidents. Um, so at the end, uh, it was working with uh, 10 different cases. Um, I did prepare some video, uh, some, some image. Uh, I, I quickly go through the installation. So this is the, the gallery A view, which I show a kind of in, inverted panopticon. So instead of the uh, tower that is uh, super, that is supposed to be surveilling, However, the tower actually projecting uh, 10 different uh, video clip that sort of introduction to the 10 purposely uh, sexual criminals. Uh, so sort of quickly. Um, then uh, in the gallery B and C, when you get into the second, um, when you forward the inside, there are 10 monitors placed on the floor and each monitor is occupied by one of the prisoners. And so I reworked the script based on the research. Uh, and uh, based on the research, actually I worked with, uh, on the script with my curator, Paul B. Preciado. Uh, we were very close together to bring the 10 cases together. And uh, each uh, case based on the real story, however, was kind of totally Bend it or sort of uh, change it into a very different narrative. Um, there is also a, a small space, the gallery D, which I built a, a sort of transparent control tower. So pretty much the whole, all the uh, surveillance tactic, all the uh, mechanic uh, electronic that's um, running the exhibition is all here, either including I set up a two to a uh, uh, 3D surveillance camera. Um, and uh, the whole show is run with a Wi-Fi uh, network control, um, but it's all there, yeah. Um, so uh, uh, sort of, uh, you kind of, I, I really, uh, because it's, a, it's also this building, it's like one of those like uh, uh, antique building, right? So you can't really even nail a thing, but uh, I also decided that I would never uh, want to uh, destroy. I, I did not uh, build a wall. I did not build a white wall at all, and rather trying to uh, keep uh, a way that, that it is. Um, so there's 10 cases, 10 films. Um, what time is it? Uh, OK, I don't think we have that much time. Um, it's very surely show the introduction uh, on video here then.
I, I did prepare these uh, uh, document, but uh, uh, I just uh, these are the ten characters. I just go very quickly. So we have Casanova. Uh, I added every name for each character has added an X, just because uh, I don't think uh, the case, for example, of Casanova is definitely not Casanova alone. Uh, then you have the case of uh, uh, Maki de Sart, uh, which is played by a woman. Uh, same with, uh, you know, Casanova is played by uh, Asian uh, European. Uh, so uh, in the 10 films, I actually do challenge a lot of stereotypical uh, character uh, way. Uh, so everyone is uh, uh, sort of played by uh, it, it really doesn't matter play uh, either by men, uh, a male character played by a woman or trans woman, uh, all these, these is, uh, uh, characters or Foucault. Uh, of course, uh, very few people know Foucault was actually uh, in prison in uh, Warsaw um, around the, in the 90s uh, due to homosexuality. Um, so that's uh, another case, uh, a case about a woman who actually uh, uh, castrates uh, husband's penis, but this is like so many cases of these, so I sort of have to bring many cases, uh, the story, many cases together. A case about a uh, carnival, a case about a uh, uh, came sex. This is the only case coming from Taiwan uh, about the uh, gay men who are having sex with 11 men, uh, taking drugs, and uh, finally uh, they are all actually HIV, uh, uh, HIV positive person. Um, but uh, the guy is serving 12 years in prison in Taiwan at the moment. Uh, the case of uh, rape by deception of uh, confused uh, gender identity as a way of uh, becoming a rape uh, or being uh, criminal, criminalized as a rape case. The case with uh, RX, uh, it's a, a Muslim person who is accused of sexual assault uh, and put into the prison right away here in France, in Paris. Um, the case with uh, a young Chinese girl uh, uploading some sort of sex video and was in, put into prison for three years. And uh, the FSP, the female spam bank, it is kind of my comic relief uh, for the 10 cases uh, about how those women was arrested uh, because they find a lot of dry condoms uh, in their car, which they believe that they are stealing uh, sperms. Well, anyway, so it was very quick to go through this. Um, I don't think I have time to show the another clip. I'm just going to come quickly to talk about the film that I'm working on now called Yuki. Uh, it's a science fiction, a viral, I call it a viral or reality cinema. Uh, it's a long story, uh, but uh, to make it very quickly, it, it, it's actually a sequel to my cyberpunk film from 2000 called IKU. This was uh, produced in Japan. And uh, so since 2000, uh, until 2009, uh, I started working on the idea of a sequel to IKU. Uh, to make a very quick story uh, discussion, uh, in the movie IKU, uh, you know, uh, there is a big corporation, the Genome Corporation, who actually sends out these uh, uh, replicants uh, called IKU code. IKU actually equal actually means uh, orgasm in Japanese. So they, uh, the Genome Corporation sends out uh, equal coders to to collect human orgasm data. Now, what do they do with human orgasm data is to make into uh, uh, phone chips uh, that you can actually buy and insert it into the phone. So this was the orgasm on the go. 
And of course, the film was made around also 98, 99. I was actually making, doing Brandon and IKU at the same time. <laughs> uh, so uh, at that time, of course, it was very hard to imagine a, a kind of uh, uh, orgasm on the go, but you know, like, I think we were, that was the beginning of the video on demand, maybe. So, you know, imagine you can also have orgasm on demand. Um, so this was, uh, uh, you, you have the Gannon Corporation produce all these coders to go collect the, the orgasm data of human being and the whole, whole story happened this way. Uh, now with the, the Yuki is actually uh, as a sequel, which I conceived in 2009 during a residency at the Hanga Media Lab. Um, at that time, I wasn't particularly thinking I can make a film. Uh, so I was thinking about, uh, uh, I would do it as a live cinema performance piece. I do it as a bio game. Um, I try many different formats to, realize this concept. Now, the concept of Yuki as a sequel to IKU is actually about how uh, the internet has crashed. So the Gannon Corporation who used to use the internet to sell uh, their mobile phone chips has lost the, the ground. Uh, but Gannon is always a biotech company. So uh, what happened is they, uh, they took over human body they decided to take over human body to create uh, a bionet. And uh, with the bionet, they actually could generate, uh, cell generate orgasm data with the red blood cells. Uh, with the cell generated orgasm data, people can actually also make this change through the handshake. And all these finally turn out uh, to be uh, 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 quite a scheme uh, to destroy the human body in a way. Um, at the same time, uh, the IKU coder, the eco coders, they are deemed uh, redundant. So they are dumped on the e trash bill. And uh, it is at the e trash bill, uh, they uh, have a different life and uh, they actually try to reprogram themselves and bring back to life uh, themselves. And in the process, they became the virus. Uh, as they became the virus, they were able to uh, infiltrate into Geno's bionet and uh, to actually, you know, here comes the story, the plot, and there's finally the reclaim of the orgasm data. So it's a kind of epical uh, story in this way. Uh, so uh, for me to engage Yuki the virus as infiltrating agents to sabotage a detrimental bioscheme engineered by Gannon Cope is really the basic uh, uh, concept for this film. And uh, I uh, have been writing the script uh, for uh, exactly during these times of confinement or, or pandemic, exactly during this time of the viral reality. Um, it's a very uh, difficult task for me either. So, but anyway, um, I don't, uh, I just want to show maybe a couple images because I'm not so sure if we have time. Um, this is all like kind of image from the uh, e-trash bill and how Yuki, uh, was dumb and then through different transformation uh, finally become Yuki the virus. This is the uh, sort of sketch of the uh, bionet uh, built by Gennon. Um, I did do a trip uh, in Africa. Uh, I don't think we can show this piece per se, but uh, uh, at the moment I'm actually building the film in uh, 3D. Uh, and also using the uh, game engine Unity to build the characters and to uh, eventually the whole scenery will build on these uh, sort of uh, uh, game engine, that, um, all that. Um, but there was, a, I did do a trip to Africa for a 
research on the electronic trash dump. Um, but uh, it's very, again, it's difficult for me to talk about all the, the story of this film. Oh, uh, but and and to actually uh, 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 show everything, uh, but uh, let me try to see if uh, I don't think we had that much time. But I would really like to uh, share, like maybe a three minutes of the uh, UK virus rising uh, as a way. Um, sorry, I if I can sh go back to the sharing. Oh. Uh, sorry. I just want to show three minutes from these uh, UK virus rising. Uh, again, I'm making this long film, but at the same time, I do do some. Um, I do have shown uh, the film in different installation format. And uh, some of them. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I'm just start sharing. And I'm going to just share. Uh, okay. I'm just going to share uh, this prayer and uh, we'll see how long uh, we can play, maybe for three, four minutes or five minutes. We'll see. Okay. Uh, can you can you all see the yes. screen? Okay, perfect.
Okay. <laughs> Hello. Um, hi. Uh, yes, we, we are still here. Oh, good, 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 good. I ended up uh, showing the whole thing. Uh, it's a 10 minutes uh, uh, installation uh, documentation. Uh, that was when it was shown at the opening at the Guangzhou Biennial 2018. Uh, I kind of consider uh, this particular installation is more like uh, my sketch for, for the feature film I'm conceiving or I'm working on. So, but uh, in in this particular sketch, you sort of see the Yuki uh, at the e-trash field and going through seven different transformations until uh, she became the virus. Um, so the title of this particular install, three channel installation is called Yuki Virus Rising. Uh, I would end with this title uh, to close my talk today. <laughs> 